Hi viewers, welcome to the first section of the course, generating reports of your data analysis with R Markdown and Knitter. In this section we'll create professional web pages that showcase analysis and allow others to actively experiment with the underlying data. Then we'll generate PDF reports of our analysis. Our report can include embedded R commands for the system to execute and fill live data and charts so that when the data changes you can regenerate the report with a single button click. Lastly, we'll generate PDF presentations of our analysis. Now we move on to the first video of this section that deals with generating reports of your data analysis with R Markdown and Knitter. In this video, we'll generate reports using R Markdown and Knitter. R Markdown provides a simple syntax to define analysis reports. Based on such a report definition, Knitter can generate reports in HTML, PDF, Microsoft Word format, and several presentation formats. R Markdown documents contain regular text, embedded R code chunks, and inline R code. Knitter passes the Markdown document and inserts the results of executing the R code at specified locations within regular text to produce a well formatted report. R Markdown extends the regular Markdown format to enable us to embed R code. If you've not already downloaded the files for this section, do it now and place the auto-mpg.csv and knitter.rmd files in your R working directory. Firstly, install the latest version of the Knitter and Markdown packages one by one. To generate reports using R Markdown and Knitter, we open the R Studio and create a new R Markdown document by selecting the menu option and navigating to File, go to New File and select R Markdown. Enter the title as Introduction, leave the other defaults as they are and click on OK. This generates a simple R Markdown document that we can edit to suit our needs. The sample document resembles as you can see on this window. With this step we create a new R Markdown document. A new document includes a default metadata section between the lines containing three dashes. This metadata section includes the title and output sections and can optionally also specify the author and date. Let's take a quick look at the document. You do not need to understand everything in it. In this step, we're just trying to get an overview. Now we generate an HTML document based on the Markdown file. Depending on the width of your editing pane, you may either see just a knitter icon, a blue bale of wool and a knitting needle, with a downward facing arrow, or the icon and the text knit HTML beside it. If you only see the icon, click on the downward arrow beside the icon and select knit HTML. If you see the text in addition to the icon, just click on Knit HTML to generate the HTML document. The menu that we use to generate HTML has options to control where RStudio will render the report. We can indicate the desired output format by selecting the appropriate menu option. However, it is possible to run Knitter within a standard R environment. In our case, the output specified in the Markdown document determines the format of the output document. Within the same file, you can generate a PDF or Word document by invoking the appropriate menu option. To generate a Word document, you need to have Microsoft Word installed on your system. And to generate a PDF, you need to have the Latex PDF Generator, PDF Latex, installed. Note that the output item in the metadata changes according to the output format you choose from the menu. Now that you have an idea of the process, use the menu option by navigating to File, then go to Open File and select the knitter.rmd file. Before proceeding further, edit line 40 of the file and change root.directory location to R working directory. For our convenience, we show the output incrementally. This step opens a pre created document that illustrates many of the important features of Knitter. Here, the codes are explained in parts. The metadata section is between two lines, 
each with just three hyphens, as you can see here. On running this part of the code, you can view the output in the RStudio console window. This part contains the metadata of the document. There are three output types, Word, PDF and HTML. The initial three hyphens indicate the start of the metadata section. TOC as yes causes the table of contents to be generated based on the headings in the document. This is explained in detail in the next section. The final three hyphens end the metadata section. This is the introduction section of the R Markdown document. On executing this command, the output will look like this. The three asterisks on a line by itself cause a horizontal line to be output. Lines starting with a single hash signify a first level heading, and if TOC as yes is set in the metadata, it's added in the table of contents. Lines starting with double hash signify second level headings. Text surrounded by a single asterisk displays as italic, and text surrounded by double asterisks display as bold. Text starting with less than HTTP and ending with greater than is displayed as a URL. This highlighted part in the RStudio window is the HTML content of the document. You can view the output on the console window. In the HTML content section of our sample document, regular HTML coding can be embedded in an R Markdown document. Knitter will only properly display the HTML if the output format is set in HTML. You must leave an empty line before starting the HTML code. In this segment, we use the HTML table syntax to produce a table. Next, we embed the R code. Change the root directory path to our R working directory, where we've stored the auto-mpg.csv and knitter.rmd files. We've already changed the location on the 40th line of the code. The output of the embed code can be viewed here. R code fragments or chunks begin on new lines with three back quotes at the start. These chunks end with a line containing just three back quotes. The text of the R code segment starts with R, followed by an optional name for the chunk. We can choose any unique name. In this step, we set cache as true, and also set the home directory for knitter. The knitter options set here apply to the whole document. Thus, cache is enabled for each R code chunk that applies this setting. We set up display options for the current code chunk. If echo is set as false, then the code chunk is not displayed in the document. Similarly, message is false, and warning is also false. Suppress any R messages and warnings in the document. Let's load the auto mpg data file using the read function. We show a code chunk named load data to read a .csv file into a variable. This code chunk does not appear in the report because we've chosen echo equals false. The location of the file is taken from the directory that we set up in the earlier step. Also, since we've enabled cache, the file is not read each time the document is generated. Post that, we plot the data file using the plot function. The output of the plot command is appeared on the console window. Further, we execute this command to plot the data with the format options. Here, you can observe the plotted output with format options. We create a code chunk called plot data. The R code appears in the report because the default value for echo is true. If an R code chunk produces any output, Knitter automatically includes that output in the generated report. Then we embed the code within a sentence by applying this command. Here's the output of the preceding command. This step illustrates to embed R code in line. Initially, we enclose the R code between a set of single back quotes. Knitter substitutes the output of the R command in place of the inline R code. Thus, nrow auto returns the number of autos and is included in the generated document. Let's learn more about the R Markdown. Visit this website for a complete list of Markdown syntax elements. This table shows the various display options in a code chunk. The next subtopic is using the render function. In RStudio, 
document output can be generated using Knitter by clicking on the Knit button. You can also directly enter a command in the R command line. If you leave out the second argument, then the output specification in the Markdown document determines the output format. Here we use this command to create the output in PDF format. And to create the output in all formats mentioned in the Markdown document, we use this command. The final subtopic of this video is adding output options. These output options can be added. Mention the type of output document to build. Number the section headings. If the sections are not named, then they're incrementally numbered. The fig underscore width, fig underscore height options are the default width and height in inches. Theme, visual theme, pass null to use custom CSS. CSS, include file name. In this video, we generated reports of our data analysis with R Markdown and Knitter. 